when you look up at the night sky in Palo Alto, it seems a little bit boring, right? And mostly you see darkness, you see some stars, they might twinkle, but, you know, it seems like there's not a whole lot going on. And what I'm here to tell you today is that that is not the whole story. So I'm a cosmologist, that means I study the history and the workings of the universe as a whole. And when I look at this night sky with my cosmologist eyes, I see something very, very different. I see a universe in which stars are born and die in these massive explosions. I see a universe teeming with billions of galaxies, which are colliding and growing and changing all the time. And I see a universe in which most of the stuff is actually made of stuff that we can't actually see with our eyes at all, and is made up of something very different than we are. So the universe is really old. It's about 14 billion years old, just shy of 14 billion years. And that's pretty long compared to the lifespan of a human, right? So one day in the life of the universe is equivalent to about half a million years in your life, right? You probably won't live that long. So that makes it hard to actually watch the whole history of the universe. But we've actually got two tools that help us to do that. One is that because light takes a finite time to travel, that means if we use telescopes to look very far away, we're actually seeing the picture of the universe as it was younger, okay? And the second tool we have is computer models. And these computer models, we can put in physical laws that we understand, and we can then use those to trace the entire history of the universe. And that's one of the main things that I use in my work, and it's, it's why I see a pretty different picture of the universe than you do when you just look at the night sky. So this is an example of what I see when I look at the universe. Um, this is a computer model ba made by one of my graduate students just a few weeks ago, actually. So in this movie, we're actually watching a small piece of the universe. Uh, in this 40 seconds, uh, we're spanning 14 billion years. This is a piece of the universe that grows into be a really massive galaxy cluster. And there's two things I want you to notice. The first is that it started out really smooth, and it very rapidly becomes very clumpy. And the second is that there's stuff happening all the time. There's galaxies merging and colliding and growing and just really exciting stuff happening. It doesn't look quite as boring as, as, as what, you know, just the static night sky. So the key piece of physics that I put into this movie is gravity. Okay? And this is the same gravity that Isaac Newton learned when an apple fell on his head. And it's the same gravity that makes the Earth rotate around the sun and it makes the ga galaxies interact, and it actually is what controls the whole history of the universe. So we are actually just heard in the last talk that we are all made of atoms, right? Everything, if you've taken chemistry, you learn that everything is on this periodic table, right? You and me are made mostly of oxygen and carbon. The Earth is made mostly of oxygen and silicon, and the atmosphere is made mostly of oxygen and nitrogen. But it turns out that the universe is made of something completely different. All of the atoms in the universe, everything on the periodic table, only makes up about 4% of the universe. Okay? That's what we call sort of normal matter. Everything else is not, on, not in that picture, not, not what you learned about in your standard chemistry class, or what you interact with in your daily life. So 95% of the stuff in the universe is totally different stuff. So most of the mass in the universe is something called dark matter, and we call it that because it doesn't interact with light, doesn't emit or absorb any light. And the other stuff is even stranger. It's called dark energy, but you'll have to invite me back to hear about that one. So this universe filled with dark matter, it's really, that's actually what you saw in the movie before, but we think that every clump of dark matter in the universe actually has a galaxy at the center of it. Okay? And this is true of our own galaxy. We know this by looking at the motions of stars in our own galaxy, that there has to be more stuff than we can see. And that stuff, there's a little bit more of it compared to normal stuff on the outskirts of the galaxy, but there's some right here in this room going through you and me as we speak. Thousands of dark matter particles going through my thumbnail every second. So you better, you know, pay attention. Okay, so now that we have this picture that there's a galaxy at the center of every clump of dark matter, we can replay this kind of movie now looking at what happens to the stars. This was made from some, uh, another graduate student at Stanford. And in this movie, we're actually watching what happens to the galaxies. Okay, and you can see 
that what's actually happening here is that the dark matter is ruling the show. Because it dominates the mass, it's actually this unseen actor that controls what happens with the galaxies. Okay? So now with this picture, we can actually use these simulations to put a galaxy at the center of every clump of dark matter, and we can use that to figure out how we expect galaxies to be distributed in the entire universe. So in this movie, this is just a fixed time, but I'm now looking at a much larger region of the universe than I showed you initially. This is still relatively small, just about 10 million galaxies in this piece of the universe. We probably think the whole universe uh, has hundreds of billions of galaxies. Okay? But we can use these tools to actually figure out exactly where these galaxies should live and how they evolve over the entire 14 billion year history of the universe. So this is a really, really powerful tool. And it's, we're actually able to test this picture using um, lots of observations with massive telescopes. Okay? So the, uh, what I want to leave you with is, first of all, the universe is very dynamic. There's stuff happening all the time. The universe is made up of stuff very different than you and me are made up of. Okay? Most of it is made of something different. And the movement of the universe, what controls the movement of galaxies and the universe a, as a whole, is this dark matter stuff that we can't actually see. Okay? So that's a really exciting state of affairs, and it's really a picture that's only come into play in the last 10, uh, 10 to 15 years. And it's been a really exciting time to be in cosmology and to, to, to really develop this picture. But um, for you guys, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. You, it took us about 15 years to you know, really develop that pie chart that I showed you. So in the next 15 years, your homework assignment is to discover what this dark matter actually is. Okay? And it, it's, it, it sounds hard, but we really have a hope in the next 10 to 15 years of figuring out what this dark matter particle is. And I hope at least one or more of you in this audience will be involved in that. Thank you. Thank you.